Hey everybody, it's Jeff from ABLE uh, here in our Brooklyn office in uh, Industry City. And uh, we have something kind of special to take a first look at today. This is a brand new Cinema EOS camera from Canon, the C70. As you can see, it's uh, by far the most compact uh, Cinema EOS camera to date. It is the first to utilize Canon's RF mount, which is their new mirrorless full frame mount that debuted on the EOS R. This camera utilizes a Super 35 format sensor. It's actually the same sensor from the C300 Mark III, which uh, also includes its dual gain output capability for like truly stunning uh, dynamic range of you know, 16 or more stops. So it's kind of like a, a mashup, if you will, of a camera like the C100, or at least what that, kind of, that, what that camera represented with something like an EOS R. Uh, and I'm really excited about it, so let's uh, dive in and take a closer look. So, uh, starting with the body design, uh, as you can see from the front, it really looks like, you know, one of Canon's uh, pro stills or stills and video bodies, such as, uh, you know, like the 1DX Mark II or Mark III. And it reminds me a lot of the 1DC, uh, especially with this uh, red uh, C for Cinema EOS. Here, but then just by uh, putting on this, uh, you know, this very sturdy top handle, which attaches uh, to a shoe that's on top of the camera, and then, you know, looking at it from the side, now it's sort of like a very compact sort of C200 style body. So they've really managed to, I think, find a very like, kind of an essential size for a camera uh, with these capabilities. It also has a, a flip-out uh, touch screen that can rotate uh, you know, very much like the EOS R and the new uh, R5 as well, but also you know, reminiscent of the, of the C100 and C100 Mark II. It's really a, a lot of uh, uh, good design decisions, I think, on, on Canon's part. You see the familiar columns of buttons. We've got really cool uh, mini XLR, three-pin XLRs, uh, two of them available uh, in these two ports. And then behind the touch screen, we've got a very familiar configuration of uh, potentiometers and switches. So we've got phantom power, mic, line, uh, as well as automatic and manual gain control and a very quick shortcut to the audio status, which is great because we see those larger graduated VU meters or audio level meters where we can see exactly you know, what level we want to, might want to line up a, uh, a test tone that we've received from an audio person. Beneath the mini XLR, three pin XLR terminals, we have stereo sort of 3.5 millimeter mini phone jack, as well as a headphone jack, and a 2.5 millimeter port for remote control via Canon's uh, paint box, uh, the RCV100. We also have a USB-C terminal, which is capable of accepting peripherals to enable wired or wireless networking, uh, as well as GPS. Uh, and then finally, uh, here at the bottom, we've got a, a full-size HDMI port uh, for video out, uh, which is configurable in the menu to send out uh, you know, up to 4K, up to and including 4K, but also can be configured to be progressive or PSF. Uh, which forces it to kind of the old school, uh, for lack of a better word, the, the C100 uh, HDMI port, which was always 1080i. So if you're used to working you know, in that way, uh, th this camera has you covered for that as well. Now I know I said there was no uh, uh, SDI uh, video output on the camera, but there is a BNC terminal kind of very cleverly uh, integrated into the bottom of the grip. And this is a time code uh, input and output jack uh, to allow the camera to be jammed uh, from a central uh, time code source or uh, allow you know, one camera to uh, momentarily uh, give its time code to another. It's another quick look at the media bay, uh, which is a, a very solid and uh, you know, confidence inspiring uh, door that's integrated into the grip itself. This camera is somewhat unique in that being a, a Cinema EOS body with an RF mount, uh, there's a little bit more information available or there's, there's just more of a, a 
higher bandwidth data pathway between the lens and the camera. And that allows a lens uh, like this one, this is the RF uh, 24 to 105, lenses which support stabilization can exchange information uh, with the body. This camera supports the uh, in-body uh, electronic uh, image stabilization, uh, but it can communicate with uh, an RF lens that has its own IS or image stabilization built into it. And the, there's a synergy there that can result in uh, you know, even, even more stabilized uh, uh, footage. So uh, I've removed the, uh, the lens that we had on there, which is the RF uh, 24 to 105. And you can see um, it's, a, it's a Super 35 format sensor, but you've got the full RF mount here. There was a lot of speculation that the ND filter uh, functionality that has been in the Cinema EOS cameras would be difficult to integrate because of the, uh, the much shallower flange depth of the RF mount. But you know, they've managed to do it. Uh, the same exact ND filter behavior that we're used to of you know, two, four, and six stops, and then an expanded range, which uh, uh, brings in another wheel to get you uh, up to eight or even 10 stops of neutral density. Uh, so it's a full 4K sensor. Uh, it shoots in the DCI 4K standard of 4096 by 2160, as well as uh, UHD uh, 3840 by 2160, and regular full HD 1920 by 1080, uh, and even 720p as well. It also uh, shoots in the high bitrate flavors of XF AVC at up to 410 megabits per second, uh, which is really significant. Um, unlike the C200, which utilized a, a relatively low bitrate and low uh, color depth version of the XF AVC codec, this is uh, very similar to the version that we saw debut in the C300 Mark II. It can shoot these in all eye or intraframe uh, XFAVC as well as a long GOP format. It also supports Canon's version of HEVC, the high efficiency video codec, also known as H.265, uh, in an MP4 wrapper in either 10-bit 422 or 10-bit 420, depending on how big of a file you're looking for. Uh, as well as the XF AVC 8-bit 420 uh, version that we know from some of the other cameras, uh, which is uh, an H.264 long gop based codec. Uh, it does support Canon's slow and fast motion uh, and will do 4K at up to 120 FPS. Uh, as far as media, it shoots all those uh, formats to uh, two SD cards. There are two SD card slots, and these are, you know, regular SD cards, not the new uh, CF Express or, you know, any type of, of media. But uh, you do want the V90 class cards that are optimized for high bitrate video, uh, and then you have a lot of flexibility as far as recording, say, one format to the card in slot A, and a potentially, you know, lower resolution or lower bit depth or lower bit rate uh, version of your footage to the card in slot B. Uh, it's very kind of clever how they've integrated it into the grip here, uh, and it feels very solid and sturdy. So the camera uh, features this uh, flip-out screen, which is you know, reversible, so you can utilize it if you're uh, you know, operating and uh, on a shot of yourself. Uh, it's also a touch screen uh, with some great features uh, that are, it's kind of a new, a new paradigm maybe uh, for Canon, where if you touch on uh, an icon in the lower left, it'll bring up something that's uh, maybe a bit analogous to like the quick menu in uh, some of the other, uh, particularly Canon's mirrorless uh, cameras. And you have a, the ability to not just see what those settings are or, or control them you know, with other user interface elements, but you can actually just you know, tap right on it and you know, change, say, if I wanted to change uh, the color temperature, for example, I could. It, it's just that easy. Uh, we also have a pretty interesting uh, status screen, you could call it, that shows us what sensor mode we're in, uh, what recording mode, and we have three uh, little pages of that status that's also sort of live, so we can touch on an item and you know change its settings if we need to by just sort of swiping back and forth. So very cool 
uh, and informative uh, display of information and settings. Uh, the camera also uses, of course, you know, Canon's well-loved color science, takes advantage of the custom picture presets um, paradigm that we've seen on some of the other, uh, especially more recent Cinema EOS cameras. And we've got a preset for BT709, which uses Canon's YDR as the gamma curve, as well as uh, Canon Log 2 and Canon Log 3. So no Canon Log 1 on this camera, which makes sense. Uh, Canon Log 3 is kind of you know, a, an expanded dynamic range version of a curve similar to Canon Log 1. Uh, very easy to grade, easy to work with, but capable of more dynamic range than, than Canon Log 1. Canon Log 2 should be able to exploit the full dynamic range of the camera. Uh, both of those uh, brightness curves are available to shoot in, you know, all the way up to and including Canon's massive uh, cinema gamut color space. Um, there's also the addition of both PQ and HLG, and those are uh, PQ being uh, perceptual quantization, the, the PQ curve uh, for shooting uh, HDR to be finished as you know HDR10, HDR10 plus, or Dolby Vision. And then HLG being the sort of live event uh, broadcast uh, HDR standard uh, hybrid log gamma uh, available you know, directly uh, as a picture style preset as well. Well, I think that about does it for a tour of the body and uh, a kind of high level discussion of some of the, the features and functionality on the C70. Now I'd like to bring in uh, my good friend Paul Hawkshurst from Canon. Uh, over video link for a discussion where we'll talk in a little bit more detail about some of the most uh, salient features of the new camera.